Welcome to another edition of Just an Opinion. I'm Ralph, and today is part three of my list of somewhat unknown films. We're going to talk about the 2000s. This decade saw another major revolution with in-home entertainment. Netflix completely changed the game with first providing DVDs by mail, but then ushered in the streaming services. Now you could seek out unknown film via online resources rather than relying on your local video store. Here's a list of my top 10 films from that era. Perhaps you don't agree with my list, but don't punish me. That's a demerit. This is just an opinion. Number 10 is Love Object. Desmond Harrington stars in this film as an eccentric introvert. He's attracted to his new co-worker Lisa, but harbors many secrets, including owning a lifelike sex doll that kind of looks similar to her. The creepy part is that he goes back and forth between trying to alter one in the other's image, quite literally. I couldn't help but notice your ensemble. It's a very good look for you. It's a very good look for you. It's hard to understand what our protagonist actually wants in this film. This unnatural tr love triangle is consistently shocking until the film's Sorry, final I, moments. I, uh, got home and... Uh, of, of, of course I appreciate all you've done for me. I... Number 9 is 13. The movie Kids was a very frightful look at youth with their everyday involvement with sex, drugs, and crime. 13 is a similar film, but focuses a little bit more on the downward spiral and bad decision that teenagers make just for popularity and, quite frankly, just to be accepted. I totally stole this. No, no fucking this idea way. Way. I have it looked. Let's see how Have you seen it? Holy shit, you guys. My god, I don't think I've ever seen this in my Let's life. Let's go shopping. Hell yeah! yeah! <laughs> Also haunting about this film is how aloof the parental units are, and when things reach a breaking point, they really just blame others. Tracy was playing Barbies before she met Evie. Number eight is Mine Hunters. FBI students are taken to a remote island as part of a training exercise, but the plot twists as one of them dies during the mission from a very obvious sabotage. Paranoia and panic are rampant as nobody knows who they can trust. All right. Look, we know that there is a killer on the island, someone who knows what we're here for, someone who knows where we'd be. There's just one problem. There's no one on the island but us. The deaths continue as the mastermind uses each victim's neuroses and compulsions against them. We all have skills. Wait, let's think here. All along we've been assuming that the deaths have been random, that anybody could walk into any trap, but look at the traps. This leads to some very clever and elaborate murder setups in this modern retailing of the tale, and then there were none. Number seven is Shop Girl, a beautiful and painful story of love, codependency, and emotional numbness. Steve Martin showcases his skills not only as a dramatic actor, but also as the writer of the source material. The plot involves Claire Danes meeting two disparate men. She is attracted and displeased with both for different reasons. And? Who are you? Good point. I'm Ray Porter. Hi, how are you? About fries. I can tell. Emotional growth is also a heavy theme in this film as the main players have to break from their comfort zones in order to move forward as a person. Number six is Wander Boys. This film features some very odd but very likable characters. Most of the cast is experiencing some form of uncertainty in their lives. Emily left me this morning. She's left before. She's left the room before, but she's always come back. This leads to some soul searching on top of some really quirky comedy throughout the film. Someone jumped on your car with their butt. How can you tell? Well, you can see the outline of a butt. You want one? They're incredible. 
Michael Douglas shines as always. Robert Downey Jr. was in the midst of a massive comeback, and Tobey Maguire showed that he was destined for greatness. Number five is The Broken Hearts Club. This film follows the everyday lives of an ensemble of gay characters featuring an entourage of past and future television stars. I, I, I never said that I wanted a relationship. Then what did you want? Something casual. Linen sports jackets are casual. Swimwear is casual. Each individual is dealing with a gamut of emotions on their own, but also within the group. So you're hit with large doses of drama in between the comedy. No dry sand. No bet. No Judy. What the fuck is the fairy supposed to do around here in case of emergency? Howie, come on. There's got to be something. Looking. There's Celine Dion. In hell. Okay. Well, the friendships are not without their flaws, though, as there are a combination of laughs, tears, arguments, jealousy, and frustration. But what friendship doesn't have those components? Number four is Roger Dodger. A teenager seeks the advice of his womanizing ad executive, Uncle Roger. Campbell Scott plays the title role to perfection. Style. So you get nervous? Maybe you're the nervous guy. Maybe that's your hook. So go ahead and blush. Stutter all you want. Show her how she makes you feel. Think of it, you're combining honesty and flattery. On the surface, he appears to have his whole life together, but deep down, Roger can't seem to separate the advertising BS that he sells to his clients from his real life. The writing and acting in this film is excellent, as Roger is a combination of arrogance and misogyny, yet remains charismatic throughout the whole film. Oh, my mom said that when Roger was little, um, he could talk himself out of anything. You know, she said he never got in trouble even when he got caught. She mm. said she called him uh, Roger Dodger. Mm. Oh, that's perfect for you. There's nothing wrong with a high verbal ability. <laughs> Nick's got it too. Number three is Igby Goes Down. Kieran Culkin leads this dysfunctional family drama as a Holden Caulfield type character. He rebels against any semblance of authority or conformity. Despite his spoiled upbringing and naivete, though, you can't help but like the character at several times during the movie. The, the dialogue in particular is very witty. You're funny. Instead of saying that someone or something is funny, why don't you just laugh? <laughs> and each character is odd and humorous, rounding out a very diverse cast. Can I have the... <laughs> uh, no, no. I, I, I'm asking about. Number two is closer. Romance and deception are at the forefront of this drama. Four people meet under unlikely circumstances and develop relationships, but curiosity and temptation lead to affairs amongst the group. The sad truth of this film is the ever-present melancholy and the arguable boredom that each person feels. Impulse decisions are made just to feel something different. I'm not pretending otherwise. How? How does it work? How do you do this to someone? Not good enough. While there are some redeeming scenes in this film, there is also the reminder of how harsh the truth is sometimes. What are you? You think love is simple. You think the heart is like a diagram. Have you ever seen a human heart? It looks like a fist wrapped in blood. Go! Number one is the door in the floor. Tragedy strikes a family with the loss of two twin boys. Jeff Bridges and Kim Basinger give amazing performances as the estranged parents. I've been thinking. I want to try separating for the summer. Just temporarily. What makes this film very sad to watch is that the characters do not seem motivated to move past their loss, and along the way they develop some very peculiar coping mechanisms. Accompanying the movie is the forlorn score composed by Marcelo Zardas. Like the actor performances, the music does crescendo at times, showing brief instances of hope, but in the end, it just remains despondent, but beautiful. Thank you so much for watching, and please feel free to leave a comment if you'd like. Thank you again. Have you ever been missing? Have you ever been gone?
long One more unknowing volunteer Disappearing one morning When you thought you were on the way home Have you ever been 